Hi folks, I'm going to do a demo here today using Ansible and Terraform to bootstrap AWX, which is an upstream version of Ansible Tower, onto Google Cloud Platform into a Compute Engine VM. The actual software we picked doesn't really matter. What I want to kind of illustrate is how nicely Terraform and Ansible work together. The view that I'm taking is that Terraform is an excellent provisioner and Ansible is an excellent configuration management tool. So we're going to actually be using Terraform to do the provisioning, do that base OS install, configure the firewall ports for us, and then it's going to hand off, tag in Ansible. Ansible is going to go in, install the required software packages, install AWX, and do some of that post configuration setup for us. So let's get started. The first thing I want to show is if you have a nicely modulized Terraform, you have a nice single point of entry for an operator or system in to go in and define what that deployment looks like. So let's just take a look and you can see we have, you know, about a dozen variables that need to be defined. We're setting up things like the admin, admin password. We're setting up the GCP service account keys, pointing it to the right project ID. Those sort of variables are what we're defining. Now there might be better ways to go around handling that project connection. Uh, that's not really the point of this demo. So the other thing I like about using Terraform is it gives you a nice single workflow for a system in to run through. And let's just run through that. So the first thing you would normally do would be Terraform init. Now I've gone ahead and done this ahead of time just for time's sake. But basically what happens here is it's connecting back to Terraform and saying, hey, here's what I'm trying to do. What provider plugins do I need? So you can see that it's checked right here for the Google uh, provider. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to check and see if this all makes sense for Terraform. So we can see, as, as some of you may know it, Terraform can also manage your state. We don't really care about that in this demo, but you can see that it's going to plan to add two separate uh, resources. Uh, specifically, it's going to be adding the computer, the compute instance and the firewalls to allow port 80 and port 443. So after your plan has been completed, we're going to actually go ahead and get it to run this. So ter run Terraform apply and see some of the things that it's going to go out and do. So let's just go ahead and click yes. And from this point on, we're about five and a half minutes out, depending on your connection. There's a bit of a hang up when it comes around actually importing some content to the AWS database. Now on my right hand screen here, I have the Google Cloud Platform Console open. You can see that the AWS instance is spinning up already. So that part's done and I can see now that it's waiting for it to boot. Terraform is using the remote exec, trying to connect into that host. Sometimes that takes a couple of tries, uh, just while it waits for that to boot up. While that's happening, what I would like to show you, I'm just going to expand this window. So you can see that it's got a pu a, the public IP, but what I want to show is if you come into this instance, down here under network tags, you see that we've tagged it with HTTP and HTTPS. Now, let's pop over to the firewall setup, remembering that those network tags are HTTP, HTTPS. Scroll down to VPC networks, firewall rules, and we see there's this one here called web firewall, and the target tags are HTTP, HTTPS. Now this firewall rule didn't exist until we ran that Terraform, so we were already sort of providing an example of how Terraform can cover multiple parts of your stack. Uh, in this case, it's doing the actual compute uh, provision and the network provisioning. And you can make that as complicated as, as you like. If you needed to go and provision a separate network um, or, you know, attach to storage, so those are all things that can be accomplished as well. This is just a more basic demo to kind of illustrate some of the points. Now, if I come back over here, we can see that AWX, or rather Ansible has kicked in and it's doing some pieces here for us. So if we pick up right where it's at here, we can see that it's doing some preparation for the AWX install. 
out of the AWS repo, doing the prerequisite package installation. And we're still looking at about two minutes to completion here. So part of this process, it also installs Postgres, as you saw with by here. Provision Postgres users. Make sure the AWX Postgres database is there. And here's the one that it kind of slows down a bit. Does the actual AWX database import? And while that's waiting, we'll flip back over here to the VM instance so we can see it. So some other things that I'll point out while we're waiting for that to wrap up. Uh, the instance name AWX01, that was a user-defined variable. The machine type, I hard-coded that into the Terraform, but that absolutely could be something that you abstract out into your user-defined variables. There'd be different ways to kind of handle that if you wanted to limit what your users were selecting. And one standard, uh, dash one is just a fairly, again, just a very standard build. Some of the other things that you can configure would be things like your operating system, uh, amount of disk, amount of memory, uh, all those things are customizable. The network, like I said, you could have Terraform provision a separate network and attach it. In this case, it's, I'm happy to just use the default network and subnet. Just at the four minute mark here. So keeping in mind that this is a programmatic deployment, some things that are really important to keep in mind. When, if you read the blog that kind of goes along with this, I talk about how organizations need consistency at scale and efficiency at scale. So the point of doing it with tools like Ansible and Terraform are I can do this a hundred times and I'm always going to have the exact same outcome. I've limited where users interact and do some configuration to that single file. So there's only one spot that a mistake could ever be made. Uh, and you can build some checks around that to make sure that they've actually selected what they're allowed to check. Uh, you know, not picking a machine that's too powerful or not picking um, an OS image that's not part of your approved set for your organization. Those are all things that could be handled. But the, the point is whether I do one server or I do a thousand servers or if I run it today or run it tomorrow, it's always going to yield approximately a five and a half minute build time and it's going to have the exact same build, same software, every time. Okay, so it's done with the database import. You can see it's actually initializing AWS config, importing some demo data, creating the groups within AWX, starting the AWX services, and done. So time to completion, five minutes, 46 seconds. We're going to come over here. We're going to make this window big now. We're going to grab this external IP. Now, sometimes this is still spinning up, so it might take a moment. But what I'd like to just show in conclusion to this demo is just logging in using that username and password that was defined in that main Terraform file. Sometimes it just takes a minute for the, the services to all come up. And just to show you while that's, we're waiting for that to come up, uh, once you run your Terraform, you have a state file. I'm not sure how familiar everyone out there is with that. But basically, when you go to run Terraform again, it's going to check that state file to see what is out there and compare
compare that to what should be out there and make delta changes based on that. And here it goes. Okay. And there you go. So in five and a half minutes, we deployed a tool that would be commonly seen in enter both enterprises and different organizations of different sizes to run their Ansible, manage their Ansible jobs. And that was done with Terraform doing the provisioning and then Ansible doing the post configuration. The last thing I'm going to show you before we go is how easily it is to rinse and repeat that. So if I want to take that down, the command is Terraform destroy. It's going to come up, confirm, you're going to see that it's going to remove the firewall and it's going to remove the instance. And if I come back out here, you'll see that that's spinning down already. Destruction complete of the firewall. If we actually switch back to the firewall view, that first one that was there earlier web firewall is now gone. Similarly, if we come back up to Compute Engine VM instances, we see that there are none now. And that's it.